Welcome to Two Crazy Scoops Podcast with your hosts, A.O. and Antino. On this week of the, the 23rd of December, we're going to be discussing Star Wars and Star Wars and another inspiring story by Aaron Owens that everybody's really been wanting to listen to. And Antonio, how he starts his life of crime. So, stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Two Crazy Scoops Podcast again uh, with your host, Antino, right here, and uh, AO sitting right across from me. So, apparently, this movie is controversial, as everyone knows. I was pretty excited to see it. I was hoping that they would have kind of done the whole Marvel thing and kind of tied some loose ends together. All the loose ends together. Had one giant smash hit, and I would leave the theater feeling like, you know what? I'm glad I wasted all that time watching all those movies because (laughs) it was finally worth it. But nope. (laughs) Nope. Um, So, since we are going to be doing a review right now, and it's not going to have spoilers in the first part, I'd like to start by saying some positive things about it, I guess, because I tend to go straight to the negative side, but we're going to say some good things about this movie. So, I really like the visuals in it. I don't know what you thought, Aaron, but... Compared to past films, I mean, I like the visuals in The Last Jedi also, which I didn't realize so many people hated that movie. And that's one thing I don't think Star Wars ever had an issue with was the the visuals. The well, there's another word for it too. I can't think of like cinematography. Is that what you call it? Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've ever had an issue with that at all. Special effects have always been top notch. Yeah. Um, with an exception of that Yoda in Last Jedi, that was horrible. I but, didn't understand that choice. Yeah, but other than that, generally speaking, Star Wars has been pretty top notch as far as the visual elements. So, mm-hmm. I agree with you. What do you think they did a little differently in this film, though? Visually, would you say? Um, there was a lot of. Con- I mean, what I liked about it is that there was obviously, like many of the Star Wars movies, there's a lot of contrast. Uh, in the different scenes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when they... We already warned about spoilers, right? We're not doing spoilers right now. Oh, we're not doing spoilers. For the first, like, well, we'll give us, like, two minutes, and then we'll just totally ruin the whole film for everybody. All right, well, like in most Star Wars movies, they visit different locations. So you have a desert, you know, which I don't think is a surprise for anyone. You have a (laughs) desert scene, right? And then you have a scene where they're out in the water. Again, that was shown in the trailer. Um, And then you have much darker scenes. And so... The contrast is, is um, like, every location is strikingly different. Yeah. So, from that standpoint, you know, again, visually, it was on point. Yeah, I liked it because, again, like, you you know that there's the whole galaxy and the whole everything. And, and then they, them actually going there instead of feeling like they're just in, in a room, which they actually are because it's all green screen. Uh, but, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, the whole, like, galaxies and all that stuff. So, I think we've hit our two-minute mark, so uh, if you're listening past this, it's just spoilers away. <laughs> just, you know, I, I hope you saw it. If you really cared, you would have seen the film already. You're right, the so, first week. So don't get mad at me if you forgot <laughs> that Star Wars came out, okay? At least it was a warning. <laughs> I mean, you, can, you can sue Aaron, though. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, some spoilers things. Oh, okay, so I would like to start out by saying, you know, there's a scene in The Force Awakens where, uh, what's his name, Finn? He's like talking to Han Solo, and he's like, "Okay, man, uh, we're just gonna go in there." And then Han Solo realizes he's just like a janitor on the Death Star, or whatever Death Ray, or whatever it was before. He's like, "You mean you're just a janitor?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, but we'll figure something out. We'll uh, we'll run in there and use the Force." And he's like, "That's not how the Force works." <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, that's hilarious." Um, the Force works like that now. <laughs> uh, okay, that is how the Force works, and that's what I got from this movie. So okay. the way I would illustrate it is, let's say that gravity was not was existent in in, in in the last two movies, right? You're like you can't jump too high because there's gravity, and then there's like this thing up there, and they need to get up there, and so the whole movie is them like climbing, climbing, trying to get there, and they get the object, and then there's like a big old celebration at the end, and that's the whole movie for two movies. 
Okay, this third one was like, oh, you know how we said there was gravity the whole time? There actually wasn't. So you could have just <laughs> jumped and got it the whole time. You're like, oh, okay. That's what this movie was like, Aaron. Okay. Uh, and I'm angry at you about it. Wh- <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, I don't know. What actually. did I do? <laughs> okay. So I thought that it was an interesting choice in uh, exactly how they went about doing things. Um, I think one spoilers part was I, I wish that there was more lightsabers in the film. I didn't really like the directional choice by J.J. Abrams to have Ray find Earth and then train in Philadelphia. I did Could really you... think it was inspiring, though, that part where she's running up the stairs and the Ewoks are all cheering behind her. Wait, uh, could you explain that a little bit? You said find Earth to train in Philadelphia. <laughs> like, So can you elaborate on that a yeah. little bit more? Yeah, I thought that was a really weird... Because they didn't go to Earth in the movie, so oh. I'm trying to understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought that it was really distasteful that they had Mark Hamill play both Leia and Luke <laughs> in the film. Oh, my God. You know, it's just, I know she's dead, but they could have done a lot more CGI. <laughs> well, okay. I agree. It would have, they could have, okay, here's the thing. When it comes to the story, they could have done more with the story if they did use more CGI for Leia. Mm-hmm. But once she passed away and once JJ said he was doing a film, he said then he was only going to use footage that she filmed for the, for the Force Awakens. He said he was not going to use any CGI, except for the scene where they show them training, mm-hmm. Luke and her. I mean, I'm sure that's CGI. Yeah. But yeah. aside from that, everything else was what she had already recorded. Mm-hmm. So he purposely said, look, I'm not going to make up any CGI for her. We're going to use her own footage. So that's why they had to build her story or her arc around that footage that was already filmed, mm-hmm. which I think it was eight or nine minutes. Of footage. So if you notice, because if you really pay attention, it's, she's not on camera that much. They take a few minutes and they sp- space it out quite a bit throughout the movie. Yeah. So in, in his defense, he had to work with what she already recorded mm-hmm. and try to build the story around that. So obviously if she hadn't died in real life, then you, they could have took more chances with the story as far as her part is concerned. Yeah. Well, obviously those last spoilers <clears throat> I gave weren't real, but... I do think it, <laughs> it would have been funny. Um, I just, yeah, I thought it was interesting too that that uh, the movie would have been a little different, I guess, if she would have been able to act. Um, but it did. I've this this next part now is just based off of a lot of review videos I've watched or listened to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just seemed like everything from the Last Jedi they just wanted to get rid of all of that, mm-hmm. all the storyline, everything. So it was pretty much like completely different. Than the last movie, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize people hated the Last Jedi so much. Yep. Oh, I liked it. Uh, nope. I loved it. It's. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I can. I can. It was not the best movie. There you go. Use your words. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, so yeah, so I agree with that. Um, this did undo what the Last Jedi did, but you have to understand. There's a little brief story. I don't know if we talked about this last week or not. But when J.J. did The Force Awakens, he had an arc mm-hmm. that he, an outline for the, the other two movies. Yeah. But it was up for Ryan Johnson, and I forgot the name of the third guy, Colin something. He was supposed to direct the third movie. Mm-hmm. So you had three different writers and directors working on this movie, and, and you had an arc that J.J. Abrams kind of set up. The problem is that when Ryan Johnson, when it was his turn to do the second movie, he chose to go in a completely different direction that J.J. had already outlined. And as a result, he threw away a lot of the stuff that J.J. set up in the first movie. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of people didn't like The Last Jedi. It wasn't because the you know the action wasn't good. It wasn't because the, the um, special effects weren't good. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with the story. Mm-hmm. For example... In the last, in the Force Awakens, the whole movie was a, a huge build up to see Luke. You didn't see him the entire movie until the very end. Yeah. So you built up to that moment. Mm-hmm. Then two years later, when the when the second when the last Jedi comes out and you finally meet Luke and see how he is, you know she hands him the lightsaber and it's like this huge thing. Yeah. Then two years later, you 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 take it and he just flips it behind him and said, <laughs> "Oh, 
and just you know he's this complete like jerk is so completely different from how from how luke was yeah then at the end he killed him off in the movie he was (laughs) jj wanted him to survive into the third movie Uh. um so that was one issue then another thing they built up in the first movie was Ray's heritage. Yeah, which they, they built it up. They, they said this. Is, Ryan Johnson just completely threw that away. He said, "Nope, your parents were nobodies." Yeah. So everyone was like, "Well, why were we waiting two years to hear who our parents were if they were just nobodies?" Uh-huh. Then you have Snoke. There's this character <laughs> who everybody wants to know. Okay, who is he? Yeah. What is a? He just kills him off. Uh huh. No explanation of who he was, where he was from, or anything. Yeah. So again, there's a lot, there's another loose end. So the problem is, is that The Force Awakens built up all this stuff and made you want to care. And then in the, in the Force, I mean, I'm sorry, in The Last Jedi, it just got all thrown away. Yeah. And then the side mission that Finn and Rose, that side mission, it was completely pointless Uh and unnecessary. So, and then a lot of people didn't like the whole, they call it Leia Poppins. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I personally didn't care too much about that scene. It Uh was like, uh, whatever. I'm glad she didn't die that way because she had already passed away in real life, Carrie Fisher. So I thought if he had blew up the ship like that, (laughs) just had her fly out, that would have been a messed up way to go. (laughs) Like, oh. Yeah, I'm like, okay. I I figured they were going to try to kill her off, but dang. (laughs) They did it in the worst way. Yeah. But fortunately, that didn't work. But people didn't like that because they were like, well, what force power has that? Like, when has she ever shown that type of power? So that wasn't a big issue for me personally, but that was an issue from the fan standpoint. Yeah. And then people hated the fact that um, that Yoda, as a Force ghost, was able to call down lightning and destroy the the Jedi, the old Jedi library or temple. What was it? The Jedi what? Uh, I forgot. You know the library the with all the of yeah, whatever. He was able to destroy that, and so people were kind of like, okay, that's new because in the past Force ghosts couldn't do that. So if a Force ghost can just conjure up lightning. Then when you think about it, all of them could have just ganged up yeah. on Palpatine in this movie and just been like, all right, Force Lightning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. In this new movie with the Force <clears throat> healing thing, it was like, I don't know. It was it was interesting because that undoes, <clears throat> undoes a lot of things that had happened in the past. And it's like, if that was an ability that they could have had a long time ago, it's just... Yeah. It seems like everything is kind of pointless now. It, it kind of throws things off. Although I will say, this is kind of a side point. I was wondering if The Mandalorian was going to tie in and, in any way to the movie. Did it? Well, not exactly, but um, the Force healing, uh-huh. Baby Yoda did it in Episode 7 of The oh, Mandalorian. brother. So, and I watched it right before I went to the movie. So, he healed uh, He healed one of the characters, Baby Yoda did. And so, in The, Man- in the Rise of Skywalker... You saw Ray use force healing to heal that snake creature, and then yeah. she healed Kylo. So they actually showed that ability in the Mandalorian. If you saw it before but the Rise of Skywalker, it, it's just funny though because at this point you can pretty much just write away anything, any problem that comes up. You're just it's just very convenient. That's all I'm trying to say. It is, and I think it it's it's more um, for the movie. The people who are fans of the movies, but who don't go deeper into the lore, some of these force abilities were present in the cartoons so the rebel series Uh, and then the clone wars and uh stuff like that certain abilities were prep who were visually well i'm not visually but they were there yeah they existed there um but for people who only watch the movies so a more mainstream audience a lot of those force abilities they didn't they weren't necessarily familiar with so i think it seemed more of a stretch for them Mm -hmm. for some of them yeah. And then you have others who just kind of look at the movie from face value surface, you know, and they just are like, oh, this is pretty cool. You know, they don't well, go too deep into it. You see, that's the thing, though. I just go off of surface like I'm not really into the whole lore or the galaxy and this and that and it being what congruent, working together, cohesive. I don't know. But it's just when I watched The Last Jedi, that's why I liked it so much, because it actually was just a movie. It wasn't about all this other stuff, right? And if you weren't if you weren't looking at the Last Jedi from a story standpoint, like you didn't care about the story, then yeah, yeah, you would you would like it because it was entertaining uh-huh. for the most part. Yeah. You know, it was definitely entertaining. You can't say it wasn't, in, but 
if you're looking at it from the the story making sense, and that's why I compared it to um to the Marvel movies. You know, it started off with Iron Man and went all the way through what Endgame. Yeah, but you can tell that they've mapped it out. They planned it out ahead of time. Uh-huh. And so each movie kind of tied in with another movie, you know, in certain ways. And then yeah. when you finally got to the Avengers, you know, each movie connected, you know, they took place at a specific time. Um, whereas with this trilogy, they didn't do a good <laughs> job at keeping the pieces together. Yeah. They kind of just threw it to the wind and hoped that it would just land in the right spot. And it didn't do that. I think you have they, to plan. I think they did it so they could make more money with Avengers. Wait, you, they did what? They like purposely sabotaged the storyline. That's my uh, little. <laughs> well, that's not a, but that's a different. That's my conspiracy. But that's a different. That's a completely different Franchise. world. Yeah. Yeah, but they can sell more stuff if the movies do better than Star Wars. Star Wars kind of over. Well, they spent what four billion dollars to buy star wars what? so why would you why? drop then why, why would, would you, you do a horrible job you spend? right why would you drop that much money how much did disney pay for star wars i think it was like four billion four point five billion yeah or four point zero five yeah so why would you drop that much money on a franchise and then just take a crap on it <laughs> i don't know and so, it sounds like you got to call someone and ask them. No, but like I said, the problem was they gave it to three different people, and those people didn't work <laughs> together. That's all it boils down to. That's funny. I mean, they gave it to three different writers, three different directors, and said, here, do this. There's nothing wrong in and of itself of giving it to three different writers and directors. That's not a problem. Uh-huh. The problem is when those three writers and directors don't work together on the story. Because if you think about it, the original trilogy – was directed by different directors. George Lucas directed Star Wars A New Hope, Mm -hmm. but he didn't direct The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. However, he was, he was like overseeing it. Yeah. So you made sure that it was a cohesive story, which for the most part it was. I mean, there might be little errors here and there. Uh Uh-huh. But for the most part, you know, it all stuck together. Yeah. And so they could have done that with this trilogy. They could have, even though they wanted to do three different directors, you still could have had a cohesive story if you had gave somebody oversight over it. And they didn't do a good job at that. There was too much arguing back and forth. Yeah. Well, the thing that I I didn't really like The Force Awakens because it seemed like it was the same exact movie as A New Hope. It was, but at the same time, to me, it was a good it was a decent start. Well, that's what I was I was like watching a video about it and it says that if it followed that line it would have turned into a better movie because it set up a really good storyline. It did. It it did a good job. And that is the main criticism from The Force Awakens. They said it's a rehash of, of A New Hope. Mm-hmm. And it is. To an, it is. But it still set up new characters that you still like. It's almost like um, it's almost like you're playing baseball by yourself. You're trying to hit the ball. <laughs> You throw it up in the air and then you swing. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's similar. It's like J.J. Abrams threw the ball up. Now, the only difference is the next person needs to come in and, and hit, just it. hit it out, yeah, you know, yeah, and knock yeah, it out yeah. of the park. So he set up a decent story. Was it the greatest? No, but he did a decent job. Yeah. And someone could have came and just knocked it out of the park. Uh-huh. But. Nope. <laughs> but, they put it through a but, paper shredder. <laughs> exactly. Ruin Johnson came and destroyed it. So. But, yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm not like that. I, I liked I'll still watch The Last Jedi. I'll rewatch The Last Jedi. I won't rewatch uh, The Force Awakens or uh, The Rise of Skywalker. And what's funny is I will watch The Force Awakens, skip The Last Jedi, and go straight to The Rise which of Skywalker. They say which you we're can basically, do. yeah, and you it's won't like... miss a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you won't. Well, it's just, I wish that they would have done something different, but it just felt like they were redoing the old movies. And I would have been fine if it was something different. But that last scene where Ray's looking up at the spaceships and Palpatine's like, join me and together we can rule the world. And you're like, huh? Like, which is the same exact thing as like when he has Luke there and he's like, your overconfidence is your weakness. Well, I mean, he was the same the same person. So, yeah, his of course he's going to be. Then why would he do it again? <laughs> why? Well, on his, yeah, on that topic of doing it again, 
Force Lightning failed him several times, <laughs> several in, the times past. in the past. And so why would you use that again? I was disappointed by that. I thought <laughs> I thought he was going to get a lightsaber and start fighting Ray with the lightsaber. They're like, couldn't he just stop? Is like, no. Apparently, he has a hard time doing. Apparently, that. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, He's he like, can't yeah. stop. Once he starts, he just can't yeah. quit. Because he did that. He did that in the in the third movie, which was. Um, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, with the what was it? Oh, Attack of oh, I forgot the name of the movie, but the third movie, the third uh, original the movie, Rise of Darth Vader or something like that. Revenge of the Sith. There that's what go. it was. He started, you know, shocking his lightsaber, and he started reflecting it yeah, back on like, him. Ooh. Yeah, and he wouldn't stop though. He kept <laughs> like stop. <laughs> if you see it's coming back in your face, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> but no, he keeps doing it. Right. Uh-huh. Then when he's shocking Luke, Vader picks him up. And he's, he's still doing still it. Still yeah. doing it. Shocking himself. It's like, stop, you idiot. Stop. <laughs> the most It's not Sith working at this point. So rethink your strategy. <laughs> but no. And he gets hurled down the long shaft. Then he comes back, which we didn't who who knew he was gonna be back, by the way? No one. But this fool gets a third chance. And what does he do? Force lightning. <laughs> he starts shocking Ray's lightsaber. Now you would think that something would click like, oh, you know what? Maybe I I've done this before and that crap got pushed back on me. <laughs> so let me think of something else. No. When no. you think about it, he now just a few seconds before the, or a few minutes before that, he was flinging Kylo and her around. Oh, like yeah. Ragdolls. Yeah. So maybe switch powers. <laughs> <and> <laughs> He'd be a little more effective <laughs> if he just threw him off. Right. The cliff. Right. But exactly. Throw her like... off the cliff. With same place she threw, he threw Kylo, and at least that'll buy you some time to think of a different power to use when she comes back. Because like, <laughs> she got will like be... this choice in his head. It's a, yeah. that meme where the guy's sweating, looking at the button. And it's like <laughs> throw them off the cliff or use force lightning. Right, <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, <laughs> I'll just use force, use force lightning. lightning. <laughs> like, oh, what an idiot! So he got what he deserved, and so she, she, uh, of course, reflected that mess back on him, which is. What he should have saw coming. Oh, he, <laughs> he could predict her, you know, what she would become when she was a kid, but he couldn't predict the reflection of Force Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what an idiot. Uh, so he got what he deserved. But I don't glad understand. He's dead. I don't understand. Like, here's the whole thing. Like, why is any character evil? You know? He had no reason for it. Well, evil is relative. <laughs> <laughs> In their minds. In their minds, they're not evil. They just want to take over the galaxy. <laughs> well, but what for? <laughs> because they would be the best rulers yeah, in their oh, head. Okay. In their head. What would you do? Like, what does it matter? If you have all of these people that you're ruling, what is the point? I don't get it. I just, I do not see Well, the that's point. good that you don't get it. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> it like, means you're Aaron, not evil. <laughs> I'm thinking of starting a cult. <laughs> <laughs> well, sign me up. <laughs> sign you up. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It just didn't make any sense. It was like, okay, you tried taking over. It didn't work out. So then the next trilogy, he tries taking over. It didn't work out. And the third one, he's like, I'm really going to take over. And it doesn't work out again. But you're like, what is the point? I don't know what the point is. He just was power hungry. Oh, well, but he had the, a bunch of power. He did. And, and it, who were all those people sitting in that stadium? Were they real or was it like some weird mirage? No, that was like a... um. I I believe, and I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> it was all I, the all the uh, audience members booing the film. Right, exactly. <laughs> it was um it was supposed to represent all of the previous Sith. Who, mm. I believe that's who it was supposed to represent. I could be wrong, so I'll read up on it some more. But I think that's what it was about. Yeah, it was all the well, previous Sith. Just, I don't know. It was just like, uh, and then he was like the whole like hanging from some. <laughs> boom lift or something well well, yeah (laughs) but i mean i mean as old as he was at this point yeah it's not surprising so i don't know we still don't know they're they are going to release a novel so when the novel comes out next year they'll you know books always have more details than the movie so they'll fill it in just write it out now they'll They'll, like okay so he actually didn't really die yeah he kind of fell down a very long yeah he probably it could there's a lot of different theories he he could have been a clone you know, the clone, the person that got thrown down a shaft could have been a clone. Because when you think about it, he had control over all the clones after the Clone Wars. Yeah. He took, you know, and when he did Order 66, you know, that's when all the stormtroopers, all the clones turned against the Jedi and killed them. Well, he had access to all that technology. You know how they say, like, don't lie because one lie 
turns into like a bunch of lies, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it just feels like with the movie because it's kind of just like one thing is is like they have to explain it is all I'm trying to say. They're like, oh, he was here because he had clones. Now we need to make a movie about the clones. Well, yeah. I mean, I agree. But you got to keep in mind, the movie was thrown together pretty the rumors are that the the movie had a had a lot of reshoots and a lot of people trying to decide which direction to take it, which makes sense because when J.J. Abrams was on Good Morning America in the beginning of this month, it was December, he just he had said, oh, we just finished filming. And that was November. So they had filmed up to the last minute because they had to keep doing reshoots because there was so many different opinions. And, you know, they showed different test audiences, different clips and different uh, versions of it that we'll probably never see. Or if we do see it, they may, they may put some of that stuff that they cut on the um, Blu-ray when it comes out. Oh, okay. But they shot so many versions of this story that it was a mess until the last minute, literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they filmed up to the last minute. So I had trouble at certain points wondering if I was watching Lost or mm -hmm. Star Wars because there was so many characters from Lost. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there was, actually. Like, the guy Charlie, he was yeah, in there. They, I was, I mean, he was in there, like, a couple times, too. Yeah, they could have kept him out of Like, it. hey, it's Charlie. Is yeah. he still, like, addicted it threw to me heroin? Off. <laughs> yeah, it threw me off completely. I was like, wait, what, what movie am I watching? Yeah. <laughs> So, but anyway, I think overall, I think it was a good movie overall, considering that J.J. had to try to fix the mess that of the movie that came before it. So overall, I think it was OK. I think he did a decent job. There was definitely some room for improvement. The pacing could have been a little bit better because they kind of rushed through the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, the emperor's back, you know, kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> He's so, like, hey, and yeah. the other guy was a clone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Snoke was a clone. Yeah, so they could have did a better job with that. But I, I could mean, have written a better Star Wars, man. Yeah, I mean, definitely. But, I mean, all things in consideration, he was trying to clean up with the mess that was The Last Jedi. So, from that standpoint, he did a decent job. So, yeah. overall, it was a decent movie. I saw it twice, and I was fine sitting through it twice. Man, I but, don't think I could. But overall, as a trilogy, overall, they really messed it up. And So how would you compare this trilogy to the prequels? Like, what? I mean, in the aspect of what would you rather see again, or do you think one is better than the other? Because I think both of them were kind of – had their own bumps in the road. They both so had their speak. bumps in the road. Um, I was not a fan of the prequels either. But they were okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was much younger when they came out, but they were okay. I don't, but I wouldn't watch them. Like I don't like watching them today. I see them on TV. I turn. <laughs> I don't really care for them. Next, this trilogy. Um, honestly, I don't know. What I did like about the original is that, um, again, it was a cohesive story. You knew it was going to happen, but you didn't know all the details. Yeah. Like you knew in the first one that Palpatine was the emperor as well, uh -huh. but you didn't know how he was going to get found out. Like you didn't know every step yeah. of the way. Uh -huh. So you were looking forward to seeing how it was gonna, like how Anakin would become Darth Vader, what uh -huh. would lead up to it, what steps we were going to take. Yeah. So that was nice seeing that story. With this one, you didn't know what to expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were completely, um, you were completely like, um, waiting to see what happened. Yeah. Whereas at least with the prequels, you kind of knew what would happen, but you didn't know the details. So for this, for because of the fact that the, this trilogy had it so that you didn't know what was going to happen, mm -hmm. it was um, the anticipation for this trilogy was really high. Yeah. Whereas with the prequels, you knew what was going to happen. You just didn't know the details. So, Which I still feel like <clears throat> when I saw Star Wars Episode Three, even though I was a kid, which was like 2005. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it. I like it was like, oh, well, I'm done with Star Wars now. <laughs> we thought we all were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but, we were. Yeah. Until now. <laughs> until coming to a theater until near ten you. Ten years later. Yeah. Watch as Ray totally destroys the Star Wars franchise with one lightsaber swoop. Exactly. So. As she joins the lost universe to take over the galaxy. So I did take some notes while I was watching the movie. The movie theater was pretty empty because I went in the morning. 
and I like having an empty theater, unless it's like a really good movie. <laughs> oh my goodness! So let me see. I thought the Sith Wayfinder was kind of weird. Another thing I was thinking about is how difficult it is to find a good employee, and yet somehow he found somebody to like command each of those ships. Like those were a lot of ships. <laughs> you know, you can't even find someone to like work for you a decent. Lee. and uh, somehow he found someone to do that uh i don't know why they're plugging stuff in all the time you think they have wi-fi by then but i guess that's not very uh visually <laughs> pleasing <laughs> but they're always like plugging wires in they got wires going everywhere and it's like i think by this point i can like print from my ipad wirelessly <laughs> and you guys are transferring like simple data oh speaking of which remember when they got that um the data from that that spy in the beginning, in the very beginning of the movie, that guy who. Oh, ate. yeah, it took forever to load. Yeah, and then later on, you saw that fool head on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dang, they caught that fool. Yeah, which it would make sense. Make sense well, though. it would because they all the planes were rushing in on them, all mm-hmm. the TIE fighters. And they were like, hurry up, get this, you know, yeah. get this transfer done so we can unhook. So when you think about it, as soon as they unhooked and they closed the door, they took off. Yeah, but you don't know how fast his ship was, so they yeah. probably <laughs> caught him right away. I didn't like that part though. He's like, "How can I pay you back?" And he's like, "Just win." Yeah, and like cool. Just win because I'll be dead. Yeah, I'll be dead <laughs> like in the next scene. Right. <laughs> anyway, so, sorry. I thought it interesting that they found an emotionally abused robot who still lives with that trauma because mm-hmm. they're like, "Somebody hurt him," and it was like that hair dryer. That's true. And you're like, what? What? what you do to a robot like you kick it what does it have feelings now you're like you stupid robot the robot's like i hate myself <laughs> yeah so that didn't make it i, I don't know i just thought it, they, they made the the robots too human i guess they're called droids i don't know more like an android is in the android thing where it's like a person it, it's like why would you program emotions and it's just <laughs> okay let me see what else uh, Poe was a galactic drug dealer, so I like his backstory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Finn, even though he was a stormtrooper, he was like a really good shot. That is not like how come all the other stormtroopers are horrible and they don't get anything, they don't shoot anything, and he's supposed to be an ex stormtrooper and he's like this ace. He's just like, oh, 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 oh. Okay, and a stormtrooper actually shoots someone in this film, but it's like really close range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, at the end, Ray slides down the hill with that little metal thing. She, uh, she visits Luke's mm-hmm. old house and yeah. she slides down there. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to slide down sand. You actually have to wax the bottom. I went to the white sands in New Mexico. It's not that easy. So anyways. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe she waxed while she was on the, <laughs> on the ship. There you go. On her way there. I'm sure that will be in the book. Yes. It will tell you the details of how she made it down there. Ray waxes while waiting to arrive. There you go. <laughs> I can't. The old actions give him space. Oh, yeah. That it kind of made the tragedy about these films is you can't remake it. You can remake Star Wars, but they only had a certain window of time to bring back the old characters and make a good movie. Mm-hmm. And that that time frame's gone. Yep. So it's kind of like there was a lot hanging on it. And to throw that away because just time itself, mm-hmm. it was like, come on. Like you had Han, Han Solo, Luke, and Leia. Yep. And Lando, apparently, he just shows up for the ride. Well, and that's one That's one of the downfalls of The Force Awakens. There was an opportunity to put all three actors together. Yeah. Luke, Han, and Leia. And they failed to capitalize on that. And The Last Jedi did as well. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, though, is it's like, I don't want to rewatch them having missions. I'm okay with having new characters. But they had them in the movies anyways. Right. You know, might as well just utilize them a little better. Exactly. And they should have all had a scene together. At least one. Yeah. And so, you know, they should have at least did that in The Force Awakens. They should have had one scene where they all could have three been together. Because after that, Leia, you know, Carrie Fisher died, and now you can't really do that anymore. Didn't Chewbacca die too? No, Chewbacca's still alive. Oh. I mean, the guy, the actor. Mm -mm. Yeah, he did. No, he's still alive. Dude, that guy died, man. Did Chewie die? 
Chewbacca actor die? Yeah, he died April 30th. Peter Mayhew. But wasn't he... Oh, so he didn't do Chewie in the last movie? Unless they CGI'd someone inside that costume. <laughs> well, no, because wouldn't the filming, have, most of the filming been have been done by that time? I don't know. Um, but e- either way. Oh, he played, oh, it says it there. He played the character in all of his live action appearances from 1977 to 2015's The Force Awakens. Before, before his, his retirement. retirement. Okay. Oh, so he already So retired. he played Chewie up and up through The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. And then um, after that. Yeah, I guess it was someone else. Okay. But same thing. I don't like the whole reverential <clears throat> treatment that they give to the past uh, films. It's like everyone's like, oh, they're all so great. Leia's so great. She's like a hero. Well, that's, Luke is so great. He's a hero. And, well, because, and that's, and that. because that's what the original films revolved around, those but characters. I think it's dumb because the film likes to act like it's so reverential to all these characters, and yet it treats their storylines like complete garbage. Well, that's what, well, that's <laughs> the reason why this new trilogy is so controversial, uh-huh. because it did treat them like garbage. No, you're right. Yeah, but, but that's I don't see the point in being like, oh, everyone's so great, when it's like, you should have just written the movie better. Don't just make it like, oh, they're so great, and they're like basically space Jesus or something. Well, no, but you know, the thing is, people uh, get attached to the characters, and when you look at it, it's an iconic movie. Yeah. And so people get attached to those characters, and so people want to see them done correctly. But the thing is, is before, they weren't writing the roles so much so that an actor can be viewed a certain way or actress so to speak like the storyline was something and people can say oh like leia's character was a powerful female lead or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah he wrote the story like that but now these next films are like purposely doing that you know what i'm saying i don't really like having a movie that revolves around like this is what we're trying to say about this I'd rather just have a story that's like, here's these things happen, the hero's journey, all that stuff, you know? Oh, so you're talking about like those, the like kind of like the political undertones of the movie. Yeah. I don't like how it was shaped into the film. Oh, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Because but, it's a story. It's not uh, parallel to Right. But unfortunately, society. yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's just going to be a thing going forward. Yeah. Stories are going to be told that they fit, and they're going to try to squeeze in quote unquote political correctness. Uh-huh. And, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah. they're going to try to, you know, push that in, you uh-huh. know. And so, yeah, there's definitely going to be some undertones in it. And yeah, ain't nothing we can do about that. Yeah. So I just think that's funny. Uh, and I think, oh, that's my last note is that, I, like I said, when it has a narrative kind of about society itself today. I think that you should just write a better story and you wouldn't have to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're trying to get people emotionally involved by putting these things into the film instead of actually being like, hey, here's a good story that you guys would like. And then everybody wins at the end. Yeah, no, I agree. I completely agree with that. So, yeah, that was kind of like my my little uh, things. I'll review while I was typing with my phone screen brightness all the way up. <laughs> Every time I wanted to, I was like, oh, yeah, I would just type something. So, yeah. But, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was good. I'm glad it's over, and I am curious to see what the next movies are going to be. So, they're supposed to start a new trilogy. I believe it's 2022. What? So, they're going to do a new trilogy. I don't know. It's not going to be a continue. It's not necessarily going to be a continuation of this story. It'll just be like a whole new story. It'll thing be a whole song. new story. But you see, that's the thing. Rogue One did exactly what I'm talking about. They took something and they made it like explain things in a way that made the other movies better. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. But that's just my opinion. And then everyone died. Yeah. Exactly. I hope you haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and then they all die, guys. And they all die. Yeah, it was, pretty, it, was a, it was a fun ride, you know? And that robot, was a, he was witty. Mm-hmm. He had a good sense of humor. He was a little snarky. Agreed. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that is our... That's our take on The Last Jedi. Do you have anything else? Or, yeah, it is The Last Jedi. No, it isn't. The Last Jedi was The Last The Rise one. of Skywalker. The, the Fall of Skywalker. <laughs> exactly. Try typing... In the theater with butter all over your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh.
A burrito was a bad no no milk was a bad choice. Ugh. So Aaron, I brought you here today because I need some advice. All right. So you're usually my moral compass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, God. there's this apartment complex. <laughs> okay. And in the parking lot, mm-hmm. there is four boxes filled with books. Okay. And these books are like it looked like someone's student books from like science as like the evolution of microbiology, all this weird, really serious stuff. And the books are in perfect condition. Okay. Would you take those boxes if they're just sitting in a parking lot or would you wait or would you just leave them be? That's a good question. Um, I pro if they're in good condition, like perfect, like in perfect condition, I mean, it's a it's a possibility that someone might have left them there. Why you would do that, I don't know. But the fact that they're in good condition it would make me think twice. Yeah, yeah. If they were trash, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just garbage. Then it's you're probably like someone left these and they're just giving them away, mm-hmm. or throwing out. So I guess it depends on where in the parking lot it was. Was there a sign that said no? Uh, that I pro- if they were new, I probably would leave them only because they're new. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna go back. Okay. So if they're still there, I'll have to. I'll have to that's another thing too. Yeah, if they've been sitting there for a while, then that means whoever left them there probably doesn't want them. Because I want to take them to Bookman's and get some money for them. Right. Exactly. So I can buy a bass guitar. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. So, that's my life of crime that I'm starting. Oh, okay. Oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> so if I get arrested, I'll be like, I swear, I didn't send it. Only were yours. We're recording the proof right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just to let you guys know. Uh, this isn't actually Antonio speaking. This is the, <laughs> <laughs> the person formerly known as Antonio. Exactly. Uh, this is my radio persona, guys. You can't <laughs> hold me accountable financially <laughs> or legally by any means. I'll be like, yep, uh, the cops want a link to the podcast, <laughs> and so I'm going to send it to them. They're like, you're going to have to Please there. listen to it. <laughs> like we your, need more listeners, please. So, <laughs> Your honor, proof, and like, it's an hour long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got time for this. <laughs> How long do they go on about stars? I don't know. I haven't listened this far either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three minutes in and I'm already bored. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Right. Yep. Good times. Great oldies. Yep. So this uh, this uh, inspiring story by Aaron Owens is... Uh... Oh, that's the thing. We have to build... You know what? We're just going to keep building it up. Okay. It's like, you know... You got to build up the te- uh, 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 tension, what uh, p- expectations, <laughs> and then for this inspiring and then you story, you just gotta ruin it like Star Wars did. Okay, <laughs> you just gotta be like, I wasn't gonna say anything the whole time. Uh yeah, I'll have a story. Stay in bed. Don't go to work. Okay, don't be inspired. I'll have a story for next week. Um, I'll have an inspiring story oh for next gosh. week. And we're having a guest. Oh yes. Okay. So. We're having uh, Jacob Ortega. We had his brother on the previous podcast or the last couple times we recorded. I kind of feel bad because we were kind of canned that episode. <laughs> there were some very inappropriate things. No, said. no, it wasn't. That. Not by me. <laughs> no, it was just we didn't have the format down and we're still working on it. You know, we got some bumps in the road. So you go ahead, you know, review our podcast the way we did Star Wars. And you can tell everybody how there was no active storyline throughout. <laughs> it's like they're just sitting there and talking. Well, folks, that's what a podcast is. That's what we do. Welcome to 2019. Oh, man. Apparently, people didn't like that I was talking about memes and laughing at them because <laughs> you can't see them. That's true. But if you check out the Instagram, we will still post. Are we still posting memes? Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll post some more memes. Well, I'm going to get your reaction on these ones right now. Uh, Oh, God. Okay. So, yes, please check out the Instagram and uh, you'll see some of the memes that we are talking about. Two Crazy Scoops. Oh, yeah. Two Crazy Scoops Instagram. Um, So, when you run to the car but have to wait for your mom to unlock the door. And it's a kid in a Sonic suit. The problem with being fast and light is that you can only live. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. And here's the other one I wanted to show you. Philadelphia Dunkin' Donuts robber spotted stretching beforehand. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Exactly. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense, right? You're going to have to make a run for it. You might as well I could just imagine. You're just like standing up. Yeah. Cracking your knuckles. Getting all Get loose. Stretch in. You're like, all right, we're about to run for it. <laughs> like, what is that guy doing? He comes like, give me all your money. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Like, oh, oh. Stretch before you... Um, <laughs> Before you rob. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, man. man. So remember, folks, take care of your personal health. (laughs) (laughs) That's the moral of this whole story. He's still stretching in prison right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so that is pretty much our podcast for this. uh, this, Today and Monday, the uh, 23rd. Oh, yeah, there we go. The 23rd of December. Uh, Like I said, we do have the Instagram, and that is two, the number two, (laughs) crazy scoops at Instagram dot (laughs) whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. So, yeah, (laughs) thank you to our our fans who've been writing in and giving us all this support. We really appreciate your messages. Uh, we are going to continue doing this weekly, as we have been. Don't forget the, to give them our uh, email again. Our email. Oh, no. Which I, I think is... I was not prepared for this. Well, I think it's uh, two, uh, two crazy scoops oh, yeah. at gmail.com. And it's also two as in the letter two. No, or the number, number two. two. <laughs> yeah. So the number two crazy scoops at gmail.com. gmail.com. That's Again, thanks for all of the uh, response we had. Uh, it's really been motivating us to continue doing this. <laughs> all, of, all, of <laughs> all of our thousands of followers. <laughs> you know, we got the haters too. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I've been getting a lot of uh, hate stop, mail. Stop, <laughs> stop recording yourself, or we're gonna take action. Stop using our copyrighted uh, material <laughs> to suit your needs. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So thank you for listening to Two Crazy Scoops. This has been a podcast. And uh, we look forward to next week when we're going to have Jacob Ortega come. He's going to educate us on some uh, pretty deep uh, educational things. He's also a left-handed person. So that's a fun fact. (laughs) We'll see you next week.